Hey everybody, Alton here and welcome back to the channel. I am really excited to bring you today's watch and the reason for it is, well, it represents a milestone for me. I started this channel just a few months ago. It was sort of a branch off of my Instagram account and all of this is just because I don't know anybody in real life who's into watches. And so I started the Instagram account about a year and a half ago, started this channel a few months ago, and I just reached 100 subscribers to YouTube, which is such a small amount for some of the big guys out there. But for me, it's totally cool. But what is really, really cool is a few weeks ago, I was sitting on the couch. Of course, we're all social distancing, right? Nothing to do. And I am on Instagram and I get this message from the Bad Rock channel. And he says, hey, are you interested in reviewing a certain watch? And I said, uh, what else am I gonna do? But then inside it was like, holy crap. <laughs> so I said, yes, of course, I would love to. He said, okay, well, Bob from Time to Go and myself, we've put together this little tour of this cool green watch by Octon. And I think you'd like to take a look at it. So I said, okay, ship it to me. And so I get the package uh, actually a few days later and it's coming from Aaron Dunlop. And I'm like, holy cow, my tiny little channel is next in line after OFD. That is OMG for me. So today's video, and you may have already skipped by all of this, but today's video for me is really exciting because it just represents some milestones to be included on a watch tour with some of the big guys like Bob over at Time To Go and Mad Rock. And I'll leave a list of everybody else uh, in the description down below. Just such a cool thing for me. So I hope you enjoy the review, and if you don't, well, I did my best. What else can I do? Okay, so today I wanna to show you a watch from a company called Octon. And I'm not sure you've heard of this before, at least I hadn't. Octon was born from a passion, it says on their website, for watches. And adventure and you can see all of their promotional advertising shows adventure action scuba diving skiing snorkeling whatever it is as a lot of dive watches do and that's really what dive watches are for now who are they the name Octon is derived it says from a part of the time phase within the lunar eclipse cycle and Octon watches are assembled in Sweden and they're shipped directly to you so this is actually a Swedish company, which you don't see a ton of these days. So I encourage you to check out octonwatches.com if this is something that interests you. And you can see they have a variety of different kinds of watches. But this is the bad boy that we're looking at today. The forest green with stainless steel bracelet. It comes in at $286. But enough of the internet. Let's take a look at the watch itself, shall we? So here is the watch itself, and this is the first time I've encountered a case like this. I've seen it before, but not in the flesh. It comes in this really cool, durable plastic container. I'm sure you're familiar with these. Let's take a look at what is inside. All right. Inside, we've got some foam, some cards, two years warranty, instructions as to how to set the time on your watch and also how to change the bracelet inside now this is really cool you've got the watch itself on a stainless steel bracelet and then you also have this cool rubber strap it's got a texture to it a printing on it and even a bit of stitching it's quite nice we'll check that out later so this watch from Octon is quite a neat little watch it's got a domed sapphire crystal with AR coating. And I actually really, really like that domed crystal. So the dimensions on this are very reasonable. 40 millimeters across, almost 50 millimeters long, 12 millimeters high, 22 millimeter lugs. And of course it has a screw down crown, NH35 drilled lugs, screwed links, and 120 click bezel all topped off with a dome sapphire crystal with AR coating. And don't forget, Super Luminova. 
It's got drilled lugs, as you can see, which makes changing bracelets quite a snap. It has screw links in the bracelet with a milled clasp, which is quite nice. A pretty simple bracelet. There's some micro adjust there for you. Nothing fancy, nothing too basic, just gets the job done, looks good doing it. And actually you don't get a milled clasp on a lot of Seikos for a lot more money. Solid end links. And actually in here, there's another bracelet. So I can give you a good look at those end links. It has a 100 and 20 click unidirectional bezel and it's quite lovely to use everything lines up perfectly very little back play it just feels solid and adding to this solid feeling is a signed screw down crown with the octon logo i think that's actually prince's name isn't it anyway the case is brushed on the sides and on the top, but it's polished on the bevel. The bracelet is completely brushed. It gives it a nice tool vibe, right? Now looking at the dial, first thing you're gonna notice is this beautiful forest green. You don't see forest green watches like this too often. Now one of the beautiful things about this dial is the way that the green plays with the light. Different shades depending on the quality and the quantity of light that is captured by the dial and the bezel. The next thing you're probably going to notice is that snowflake hour hand. And then you're probably going to pick up that, my kids would call it a Harry Potter seconds hand, sort of lightning bolt seconds hand. Now, if you're familiar with watches at all, this is going to remind you of something else. It's going to remind you of a certain Tudor, and it has a design aesthetic that you can see right throughout history from Rolex to Tudor and various other watches. It's definitely not original, but what I would say is that it's very well made. It's got a good feel to it. It's got a good heft. Everything seems to just fit together well. The brushing isn't, I don't know, it's not what I would say excellent, but it's not poor by any means. It's definitely nicely done. The little bit of polish on that beveled edge is a nice touch. It just gives a little bit more class to this tool watch. Now I was looking at other watches in the Octon lineup and I think that this is one of their more grown up versions. Some of them are kind of funky. And I understand that you can also do a lot of customization right from their website, which is pretty cool. Now for me, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the Harry Potter seconds hand. I think this is such a grown up tool watch that, well, I mean, it's a diver, but to me, that's how I would wear it. Cause I don't dive. I just think it's so grown up looking that just a regular seconds hand would have been better for it. And here is the Octon diver on my eight inch wrist. Now, normally I shy away from 40 millimeter dive watches. In fact, I've never even tried one on. 42 millimeters, 44 millimeters, yes. An SKX, a Dan Henry 44 millimeter, a Samurai, of course, but nothing this small. But I have to say, it just wears so well. I'm a convert. Normally 40 millimeters is on the small side for a dress watch for me, but I have to say, something about this and the way it fits. I just love it. I have no problems now getting a 40 millimeter dive watch. And what a dive watch. It's it's rated 300 meters. It's super duper legible. The printing is clear. The indices, everything is just really, really well made. Now let's talk about the loom for a second because the loom on this thing is crazy bright. I didn't charge it one day, I just wore it during the day, watched some movies at night, went to bed, threw it on the bedside table. At 6 a.m. I woke up and it was still glowing bright. The only thing that rivals this thing in, in my collection anyway are my Seiko divers. So 
yeah, I think when it comes to the loom, you're going to be okay. So I decided that I would take the bracelet off just to give you a chance to better see the case back here. Because it is quite an interesting little etching. The Octon Octopus wearing, I guess, sort of similar to the Dan Henry. Wearing an old-timey diving helmet. And here's what it looks like on the rubber strap. I have to say, I like the rubber strap. But this watch in particular, it just looks so good on that brushed bracelet. I don't see much of a need really to change it. So this strap is super, super comfortable. And I have an eight inch wrist and there is a ton left over, which I quite like. And there's quite a few other adjustments if you have a smaller wrist. So this is a really nice addition to the watch. I guess if you were going diving with it and it is 300 meters rated, then rubber really might be the way to go for you. But for everyday use, I think I would prefer it on the stainless steel bracelet. Oh, and I should say, if it didn't have drilled lugs, there is no way that I would have been changing out that bracelet. So let's talk about what I like about this watch. Well, first of all, I like the packaging. The packaging is fantastic. It's just super duper useful. It's rugged. It, it really fits the theme of action and adventure that they have going on. It comes with an extra strap. It comes with different screwdrivers. I love that about it. I mean, what's not to like about that? I like that it feels hefty. It feels solid. It, it For a 40 millimeter watch, it just is more heavy than you think it would be, um, which I don't mind. I know some people don't want a heavy watch, and I'm not saying it's overly heavy. I'm just saying for its size, it's deceptively solid feeling. I like the AR coated sapphire crystal. The forest green dial is beautiful. The size is fantastic. The bracelet is, is really quite nice. I mean, I wouldn't say there's a wow factor to it, but it's, it's well made, it's well presented. I mean, what more could you ask for? It's extremely legible. And I like the length of the hour and the minute hand and the seconds hand. The way they reach out to where they should be reaching out to. A lot of watches just seem to have stubby hands for some reason. So what are some of the negatives of this watch? Well, there aren't a lot, really. The one thing I might say is I'm not a huge fan of the end link on this bracelet. Do you see how it has this protruding center link, really, which adds to the overall length of the watch? And, and it stops short on the sides, which I don't know. I just, there's a lack of symmetry there. I'm not a huge fan of that. Now I have a bigger wrist, so having longer watch is not a problem for me, but it might be for some. So that's one negative. And really it's not a, a big deal. You do get a rubber strap if that's your thing. The second hand, it's just not very grown up for me. I think this is one of their more grown-up watches, and I just feel like a more traditional hand would fit it better. Thirdly, well, it's too Tudor. I mean, let's be honest, it's not that original. And a watch this well-made, to me, there's just something that says, I would have loved this if it had been an original design. And then there's that green dial. I know I listed it as a positive, but at the same time, for me, it's a negative. And I wanna speak about that in a little more detail in my final wrap up. I wanna share with you three things that I learned from this watch. So this watch has really taught me three things. The first thing that it taught me was I can actually pull off a 40 mil diver. With an eight inch wrist, I just didn't think I could. I kind of skipped over anything that remotely resembled less than 42 inches. The second thing that I learned was I'm not really a green dial guy. I, I like blue, I like black, I like white. I love green straps, but for some reason, I'm just not into this green dial. It's beautiful, don't get me wrong, gorgeous forest green, but it's not for me. And the third thing that I learned through this whole adventure is that the watch community is just awesome. I mean, I am 
so thrilled to be involved in this watch tour and hopefully I'll get my chance again in the future. The people in the watch community are just amazing people. They're, they're generous, they're kind, they're affirming. I've been involved in other communities and I know there are some bad seeds out there, but for me, this has just been a great experience. So uh, thanks to Mad Rock, thanks to Bob and all those guys for including me in this. And thanks to you for watching. If you liked all of this, or even if you didn't, like and subscribe, or don't, I'm not your dad. <laughs>